Hello and welcome to another edition of Charlie Leaks. My name is Charles Anazudo. Today on the show, we're going to be speaking to a footballer who plied his trade in the MPFL and he says the MPFL is not marketable, the MPFL is not productive. Who exactly are we talking about? A man who's been to the Americas. He's also currently in Bangladesh playing his football. And here we are talking about Mfon Udo. He is spitting fire. And this interview is one that you definitely don't want to miss. Mfon, good to have you on Charlie Leeds. It's been a while, man. Yeah, it's been, it's been ages. Good to have you too. Thank you for having me. Last time I heard you were playing football in, in, in America for Tulsa. And then we heard you came back to, to Aqua United. And then all of a sudden, you know, we hear you're back playing football abroad, but this time in India. Tell us the story, you know, um, going to America, coming back to Nigeria, and now playing your football in India. Tell us about that. Well, um, football, like life itself, is um, it has its own ups and downs. You know, sometimes you you're here, sometimes you're down here, and um, it doesn't matter how many times you you find yourself down. But the most important thing is um, trying to get up and keeping the fight. So America didn't really work out. You know, it's football. You need some playing time. And you need to showcase yourself and to express your your full potentials. But it didn't just work out. I had to come back to the drawing board. Came back to Nigeria. I started grinding back again. And um, yeah, I know people might say Bangladesh is not the best of football, like not a football nation, but it's still much better than most places. So yeah, we start again. All right, tell us why it didn't work out in America because, I mean, we thought that from there, you know, we'd hear of, of bigger things for Mfon Udo because your time here in Nigeria, which started with Calabar Rovers up until when you played for Aimba and then Aqua United both times, you know, and you did play for the Super Eagles that one time as well. You know, the sky seemed to be the limit, you know, for you as a footballer, but Tell us why America didn't work out for you as you thought it would. Yeah, um, I think there were a lot of factors. Like um, from my own ends, I think I was kind of slow in um, adapting to the system, you know, the weather and everything. And then um, also from the team side too, I, I, I wasn't having a lot of playing time, uh, you know. I had, I had a year contract with um, options to renew. And um, I, I don't think anything will want to keep a player that is not productive to them. So I think my productivity in the team was not there because I had no or little playing time. So I couldn't just get another contract. Okay, so you say your productivity level was very low. Um, not something that we you know, can attribute to what we know you for. What was the reason for this? Was this because it was a yes. new... If Surrounding family if, not there. What happened? A lot of factors, but I think one of the, um, the biggest factors is when you're not having a lot of playing time, you can, you can't be productive because even if you're productive in training, you cannot be productive for the team if you're not playing matches. Because I think the, a lot of the productivity comes in in the game. So if you if you have little or no time to play games, I I don't see you expressing yourself and to to show your full potential. So I was well, the a lot thing. Of why weren't you? So that was, why weren't you playing those matches? Um, was it a, a quarter system, foreign? You know, uh, what, what exactly was the reason? I, I, I would say, I would say, coach's decision, and um, you know, the co co coach, coach's decision is always right. So if he says uh, you're not doing well enough to to get into my team, I think a, a couple of times I I met with my coach. I said, ah, I think I'm being productive enough in training to play your games, but you're not playing me in the games. Why? And um, I, I don't want to just delve into much of that, but I, I think it, it didn't give me a lot of reasons for me not to not to be in the team because I think I I, I did my best, and um, I was also trying to to compare my productivity in training with um, the players playing also in my position, but um, I didn't think they did more than I did. So, but 
Has this really thing, has this, has this got anything, has it got anything to do with the color of your skin and where you're coming from? Uh, I, I don't know, honestly. I don't know. Because that, prior to that time, I think there was a, a, a lot of racism in America. I think that was when this um, Black Lives Matter started. And um, mm. yeah, but I, mean, I wouldn't know. But I, I, what, what I do know is that I think I, I did enough to get my, myself in, in, in playing form, but that was not given. Okay, so you left America, you came back to Aqua United, and you know, there was an open door for you. You were welcomed, open arms. Um, share your experience with us um, at Aqua United upon your return to Nigeria and the NPF. You know, um, coming back, I had to be mentally tough. I had to be mentally tough, you know. They, they, because every, everyone would feel, oh, you went, you went abroad and you came back probably you didn't do well, which is true. Mm. Because most definitely, if you did well, you, were, you, you will stay. So you didn't do well. So um, you're actually in a state of a trial process. Oh, is this still the same person or has he dropped this form or something or something or something? So you, you have to regain the people's trust. You have to keep up to that same level of expectation or even more. But I, I'm this kind of person that I, I know myself, I know my worth, I know what I'm capable of doing at any given time and I have this mental toughness of of doing things even when everybody expect expect me not to. So I had this my toughness of which I've always had. I I did what I need to do. I played cool. I took my training seriously. I had to coach his instruction. And I think I I, I did well. All right, so you now moved on to, to India. And, you know, we raised the question earlier. You know, a lot of people would ask the question, why India, of all places, to go play for? What's the reason for this? Is that the only place that your agent could find for you? Well, um, sometimes where you are is not actually the destination. Sometimes you, let's, let's use um, somebody traveling to... Probably, let's say US. When I was going to US, I did not just fly from Nigeria to US. I had to use the route. I, I passed through Frankfurt. I had, I had I had an option of passing through Turkey or Frankfurt or there about, but I actually used Frankfurt to to US. So sometimes your destination does not really it, it does not really matter where you are right now, which is not the destination. But probably I'm just passing from here to somewhere else. So I think this is just another stepping stone to get to where I'm going to. And a lot of people might say, "Why India?" Like you just asked, yeah. They think it's not a um, Bangladesh, though, which is an India Asian continent. They, they would think it's probably not a football nation, but I think it's not judging from anything, but from comparison, I think it's much better than it's better than most of the leagues. It's much better than the Indian <laughs> league, I must say too. So, uh -huh. so when you yeah, see lot, I was... when you see, when when you see people when when you see people saying they just say I think it's out of ignorance because they have not really studied the league so they wouldn't know they just say oh Nigeria league why would leading Nigeria league to go play in India a lot too many differences is much much more better than so when I see stuff like that I close my ears I still stay focused I do know for sure that the Indian league you know has quite a number of um, very high profile players. You know, um, it used to be on television, you know, on, on DSTV, you know, so we, we know exactly uh, what it's like and the standards have not fallen in, in any way. You know, so the Indian League is something that is up and coming. So if you're, if you are there, obviously uh, sorry, shows it's not really that um, India, it's, 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 to sorry, sorry, it's not really India, it's Bangladesh, it's Bangladesh, is an Asian country. No, Bangladesh, okay, 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 yes. okay, okay. All right, you talked about the quality of of the league in comparison to the MPFL. Why would you say that the league in Bangladesh is a lot better? And what's the reason for players moving from the MPFL to other leagues around the world, which quite a number of Nigerians are not uh, familiar with? Uh, would it be that desire to play football abroad or is it basically for economic reasons? Um, a, a, lot, a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons, which I, I might not know from other people's perspective, but I know it's, it has a, a whole lot of reasons, but I'm just going to touch about a few. Um, if you talk about economic reasons, I think, yeah, that's one of the reasons why 
people move to some kind of places. And I was talking about um, the standard being higher than the league. Okay, you, we have we have games shown live. All games shown live. In, mm. uh, even in Nigeria, when, 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 when they were showing games, they used to have star games. They say, okay, today we're going to show this game while other games are not being showed. But these games are being showed live. I, I, think, I think that that the telecast is, is, is broader. You know, people could can, can see you from some other places. They even have the, uh, the mm. YouTube link, which even if you don't have a link to watch, you can go, you can go stream it on YouTube. You can still watch it live. So I think it has a whole lot of coverage. And that is one great aspect of football. Everybody wants to get seen. And if you're playing in Nigeria, you don't get seen. So I think this is one. So when you talk about the economic aspect of it too, it's an, another one. And also the management, the stress of like, Nigeria League has a whole lot of stress. Traveling from <laughs> Akwaibom to Meduguri to Abuja, two days on the road, 24 hours, 10 hours, and a lot of that still playing games, coming back the next day, playing by weekend, playing by midweek, you know. It's a whole lot of stress, fatigue for the players. And if you come to places like this, they will say it's bad, but you know, this the stress is reduced. You, you, you don't you don't get to see those kind of things. You, you go to your games, you come back in a very comfortable um, atmosphere. So there's a whole there's a whole lot of reasons. All right, as far as infrastructure is concerned, um, how would you rate the, the league in Bangladesh as well in comparison to what you saw in America? And what you also experienced um, in the NPFL? No, I think I think uh, America, in terms of organization and um, facilities and all, I think I think I, they, they, I will rate them top notch. They have that, and um, yeah, for that they're good. Um, America is much better in terms of organization than Bangladesh, and of course Nigeria for sure. And um, the Bangladesh. Is quite more better than Nigeria. Nigeria, if 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 I'm not mistaken, or if I'm not being sentimental, I think you know. <laughs> or I'm mistaken. Okay, but in what way exactly? Is it the standard of football? Is it the organization? Is it the way the teams are run? Is it the amount of monies that you get paid? Because I know that when you you were here in the NPFL, you were one of the highest paid players in our league. All all. all all of the above mentioned, everything you said, all of it. Wow. All of it. Okay, so let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look, a little peep into your future. Um, now you're in Bangladesh. I mean, that, that, that cannot be your boss stop. I'm sure you want to play football or someplace else. Uh, what's your ultimate ambition as far as your career is concerned? Uh, honestly, I... Some question I've been asking myself a um, couple of weeks, couple of months ago, even a year from a year ago too. I've been asking myself the same question. Honestly, I'm. I get to a point where I just want to do my best and pray to God and see where that leads me to. Because the the ambition I had when I was 22 cannot be the same ambition I'm having right now that I'm 29. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, football. Football is time. Football is time. Football is time. And every day the clock ticks. And, um, you know, uh, I, the ambition of a, a 29-year-old will not, in football will not be this, the ambition of a 22-year-old or an 18-year-old. So mm. as, as the time ticks, different ambition. I'm, I'm now a father. I'm a husband. And um, I, have, I also have a whole lot of focus, you know. I have a lot of people I'm taking care of. So my, my ambition actually is changing. So I'm just praying, I'm training, I'm just wherever it, wherever it takes me to. You talked about your family. Um, are they with you in Bangladesh or are they back home in Nigeria? Right now they're back home in Nigeria. I've been here barely three, three, three months plus. And um, probably hope to go see them um, on my break, I think I might have a break on April, so I go stay there. But if if I'm if I'm to stay here again next season, I think I'm, they're going to join me fully. All right. Earlier on, I was going to introduce you as as an international. Yeah. 
Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to refer to you as an ex-international or still currently an international. You know, um, do you still harbor that ambition to play one day for the Super Eagles again? <clears throat> or are you are you are you retired from international football? Talk of talk of Super Eagles. Ah. You know, Nigeria has a lot of Nigeria has a lot of players, and uh, if we, you say, you say something about the standard of, of of the league of leagues, though, the I I don't see I don't see um a Nigerian coach um leaving uh, the top standard standard leagues like, like um, the Bundesliga, La Liga, and the rest of them Premier League, you know, to come to a league like this to come scout for a player, but um. It's, it's it's our country. If 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 opportunity comes again and we call the board to play, for sure we will. But right now, I don't think that is ambition, honestly. <laughs> well, you had your chance to play for the Super Eagles. Um, it didn't last very long. What would you attribute that situation to? You know, was it that you didn't give your all? That you didn't find favor with the national team coaches at then? What exactly was the problem? A lot of factors, I would say again, a lot of factors. Starting from the starting from the league, the kind of league I played, the Nigerian professional football league, the standard of the league. Because if you if you're talking about finding favor, like um from the position I play from, I play, I play, I play where you have the likes of Ahmed Musa, I play where you have the likes of Chukwizi, I play where you have the likes of uh, Moses Simon. And um me putting putting all these players out to play. Requires a whole lot of work, and in the standard of the league where we play, the kind of field we play, the, the circumstances surrounding the league is very difficult to see a Nigerian league player break into these teams where you have players like this playing in top division club abroad. It's quite difficult. So I think I, I had a hard time trying to break into the team because the coaches would not even believe, no matter what you do, they won't even believe that you you, you can do it because of the kind of players. That in the come with you. So, is it a function of the kind of coaching you know that players receive in the NPSL? You know, because these players obviously used to play here. Moses Simon, you mentioned Chukwueze. You know, all of these players. Are, are you saying that because of their exposure, you know, and the kind of facilities that they're exposed to, they're a lot better than the NPSL players? You know, so. Does it boil down to the level of coaching that MPFL players receive, which you might say isn't good enough? I think I've said this thing before, and I've still said that I've not forgotten it. It's not about the coaches or the coaching. I said something about um, two students studying medicine, a student studying medicine in Nigeria, and a student who studied medicine in Harvard. And they all come back to Nigeria to look for a job. Definitely, the, the one that studied in Harvard is going to be more, more preferable to the one that studied medicine in Nigeria, even if both of them came out in first class. So I think mm. the, the, the coaches in the national team already, oh, they, they already have their preference. You, 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 you wouldn't even want to choose the, the player that comes from Nigeria over a player that comes from, from uh, a team outside the country. Definitely, you, you always want to give the first preference to the other one. And if that one does well, then I think this one has no chance. But do you blame a coach who would rather go for a player who plays in Harvard? No, I don't. It's against one who plays at University of Lagos. I, I, I don't, I don't blame them. But if, if I were, if I were them, I think I, I would also try to give um, the local players chances. You know, because this argument has gone on for a long time, and you talk about the the championship for African nations. That's Chan, you know, where home based players on the African continent are given a chance to express themselves. You know, and the Super Eagles have gone to the Chan tournament. They've never won it, you know, despite being highly rated on the African continent. Oh. You know, amongst their own peers, they still can't get the job done. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that is... Uh, let, me, let me just bring something up right now. In, in the just concluded afternoon in, 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 in Cameroon, mm. um, five players, if I'm not mistaken, five or more, after, after the Afghan tournament, after the finals, they flew from Cameroon to Saudi Arabia to join Al Ali in the ongoing uh, uh, FIFA World Club Cup. Imagine mm. players from Al Ali playing in the Nations Cup. How many Nigerian League players played in the Nations Cup? 
So if those players could play in the AFCON, that is to rate their league. That means their league is highly rated. It is more organized. It, 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 it's advanced for you to see five players from Al Ali alone, one club, one club in Egypt playing, one club in Egypt has five players playing in, in the AFCON. So these are the same players that played with our own super egos players that played, that is playing our brother. So if those players can play, can compete with our players playing abroad, if those players play with the, Niger- the Nigerian players that are playing in Nigeria, how do you think their performance will be? Of course, they will ride us. They will ride us like a horse. They will ride us up. So because, that is because their league is advanced, it's improved more than the Nigerian league. So you, you, you wouldn't expect the Nigerian league players to triumph over them because their league is highly rated. They, they have all it takes to make their league a good one. If our league is more organized and more, it has more value, then I think we, we can compete with them. So you wouldn't expect Nigerian players to go to China and win them. It, 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 it will be hard. It needs a lot of hard work and a lot of determination to do that. Mm. Uh, you talked about the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, the Super Eagles exited round of 16, won those first three games, defeated Egypt in the first game, you know, and everybody thought, well, the Afghan trophy is coming back to Nigeria. Were you in any way disappointed you know, with the performance of the Super Eagles, especially knowing that the manager was fired just about three weeks to the start of the AFCON. Honestly, I'm, I'm one person, when I saw the, the rants of uh, many Nigerians on social media, I just laughed because most of them are they're naive about football. They, they don't really know. But most of them watch football only on TV and make the analysis on TV. But someone that has played football and know football, someone that has played football and know football would know. I personally, from my own judgment, that team was one of the best team I've seen in ages. The commitment, the fight, the ball play, everything. So sad they lost. Unfortunately, we lost, but the spirit in that team was top-notch. So even if they lost, I will still say a big congratulations to them. They did so well. So in your opinion, um, Augustine Aguavo should remain in charge of the Super Eagles um, ahead of this World Cup qualifier against Ghana. Especially, and, and, and the Ghanaians really are doing everything possible to make sure that they qualify. You know, Chris Hutton, a former manager at Newcastle, Brighton and Hove, is now the technical advisor. And they've hired quite a number of ex internationals to lead the Black Stars against the Super Eagles. So, right now, the pendulum doesn't exactly favor the Nigerian national team. And the Super Eagles must be in Qatar. What's your take on this World Cup qualifying? The, the, the truth will always remain. Even if, even if Nigeria signs Jose Moreno right now and lose at the qualifiers, they will still say, why didn't you retain Equavon who did so well in the AFCON? And even if you keep Equavon mm. right now and Equavon still loses, they will say, why didn't you go to bring a, a foreign coach? But I think with Equavon, the spirit, the, spirit is, the spirit of the team is high. Same, same set of players, almost the same set of players who played under Genero. But... I think it's a different kind of spirit, a different kind of morale. I think everybody's giving more. And um, I, I, I think I stick with the decision of the NFF to, 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 to keep it. Mm. You know, the Africa Cup of Nations, um, goalkeeper Madhukal Koye was, was vilified, you know, by the fans of football uh, for that goal that he conceded against Tunisia. You know, before then, he could do no wrong, you know, as far as, standing in between the sticks is concerned. Personally, I did say on many occasions before the AFCON that I think, and I still believe, that Francis Uzoho is a better goalkeeper. Uh, but as you say, I've never played football at that level, so I might not have any idea. But as, as, as a professional, as the professional that you are, what do you think of his performance at the Cup of Nations? And... Um, is it right for the average Nigerian footballer or Nigerian football fan to criticize Maduka for his non-performance, if I may use the term? Most, most, most definitely. If, 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 if you're not doing well, if you're not doing, um, if you're not doing well, if you're, because everybody expects you to, to, to be at, at your top best in, in that kind of high-level competition. And if you're not doing well, definitely you're going to face critics. And um, I, I don't blame any Nigerian for criticizing him definitely poor results always bring critics. Even if you're not doing well and you get the good results, you get the required result, 
they will always praise you. But if you don't, you will always be criticized. So uh, I wouldn't blame Nigerians for criticizing him. But um, that particular goal he considered against uh, Tunisia, yeah. Tunisia, yeah. When when I when I saw the replay, I, I think there, there was a kind of wave in the ball. The ball the ball didn't just come direct. There was a kind of wave in the ball. Though he should have done better, but it's it's it's, it's a, a ball that could beat any goalkeeper. I I see world class goalkeepers, even top top class goalkeepers, even more than my uh, Maduka making worse mistakes. So it happens. It's football. All right, still talking about criticism. Um, Nigerians also criticized the Nigeria Football Federation, um, led by Amadou Pinik and Amadou Pinik in Cameroon, um, more or less opened the doors to wealthy Nigerians, uh, public officials to gain access to the Super Eagles, promised them heaven and earth as money's flying around. You know, and I spoke to Eguavo in Cameroon and I put this question to him about how comfortable he was, you know, with this exercise. And as far as he was concerned, he says, it's our way, you know, it's something that we're all used to in Nigeria. What do you think? Is, is this something that we should embrace, you know, especially going into Qatar, if we do qualify for the FIFA World Cup? Uh, I, I know, I know um, the person that... Uh, most of the people that promised those cash, they, they, they did that with good intent. But you know, you can do something good in, in, in a bad way. Uh, go, I think um, the break of a, of a first half of a game is to, you know, try to see how to correct your errors and try to patch things together, you know, talk to yourself. It's not a time to start promising money and all those stuff. So I think that little 15 minutes was, the t- it was a time for the team talk. And not time for money. So he did the right thing, but I think it was in the right, in the wrong atmosphere. He should have. They, they would. Have, they, there are so many ways he would have converted his message or passed his message down to the players to motivate them. But I think going to the dressing room, talking to the players at that particular time, is a no for me. Okay. All right. Let's come back home once again to you know your days in the NPFL. Started with Calabar Rovers, the Unisem, Unisem back in the day, you know, yeah, and um, yeah, Unisem. Unison, yeah. And then you run it off with your last stint at Aqua United. Which was your favorite club to have played for, you know, in the Nigerian League? And why? Ayimba. Ayimba, because they, they have this special kind of ambition. Their ambition is just so high, like um, their goal, their goal is in the sky. It's like, if Ayimba is playing in any tournament, no matter how small the tournament is, and even if it is a spoon, that is the is the trophy. They want to get this point. I think it's, it's, it's a good it's a good mindset. It's a good mentality. They always want to win, 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 win. So they they, they make this winning mentality in your head. You go to away games. So in in the league, we have this. Uh, oh, it's an away game, so you will lose no problem. But Aimba will always make it, the camp uncomfortable for players, even when you lose in away games. They they make you understand that you need to win home and away. So they have this winning mentality. In their stuck in their head, they want to win every trophy. Every, no trophy is is too small for them. They want to win everything, so they have this winning mentality. They have this ambition. They always want to be there at the top. They want to be recognized. So I think I love them for the ambition. You also made um, the seat of officials at Aimba very uncomfortable. You were known to fight for the rights of your fellow players because you did captain the squad. And uh, once there was a story making the rounds about you. Um, leading the players to some sort of boycotts, you know, was was that the kind of person you were and still are? Well, um, <laughs> you see, this particular question is always uh, when you, when you're when you're the leader of of, the, of of any place, anything that happens starts with you. So if you Nigeria Nigeria economy is not really good, and the when people are working with, with sweat. And everything with everything they have, and um, not get paid. It's always very painful. Like you said, if I want to use one statement, in our way, it's our way <laughs> in Nigeria, you know, to to all players. But when mm-hmm. these players, it's, I think that in Aimba particularly, there was a, a time when these things happened, and players were being old. I had a lot of players say, "Eh, 
the chairman of the club is your friend, so he has called you, he has given you your money. That is why you don't want to speak for us. You, you're, you're our leader, so you have to speak for us. If you don't speak for us, nobody will speak for us. And I felt their pain. If I don't speak for them, yes, nobody will speak for them. And I know, and I also knew the consequences. If I speak for them, at the end of the day, I was going to be the one to be nailed. Mm. So I, I thought about these things. They said, no, you've got to your own. That is why you're not speaking for us. And like, I always do my thing. I sit them down and I tell them the possibilities of getting this money. Is, yes, it's possible to get it but in this way. This is what is going to happen. These are the, the consequences. But I just had to, I had to do what I had to do because I knew a lot of people had, had families. I wasn't fighting with no one. I wasn't insulting anyone. I did it appropriately, took it to the authorities, and I spoke to them in a manner that even a father would understand with his son. But, you know, I, I don't know what their case was, if they didn't have the money or if the money was there and they refused to give the money. But, you know, if, if, if you take your father outside and you drag his legs and bring out his dating linens outside, you always want to punish him for that. So I think I was punished for, you know, fighting for the people. It happens everywhere. Freedom fighters always die. <laughs> Felix Anyas has been the sole administrator of Iba for so long, you know, for as long as every, anybody can remember. And quite a number of people suggest that maybe it's about time that somebody else take over that responsibility. You know, having been there as well, um, what's your take? You think Felix Anyasi has done the best that he can and needs to give somebody else a chance to see if the club can rise again, so to speak? I, I was having a chat with my friend about this same issue. Somebody was, my friend um, brought up this issue and he was saying the same thing like this, if he should give another person a chance. And I, and I said, he, he, he's been in the club for so long, yes, agreed. And he's been doing so well in the club. So now you, you're trying to take him off. I, I'm not citing nobody right here, but I'm just being realistic. You're trying to take him off to bring someone else. Mm. So if you're taking him off, what is your reason for taking him, him, him off? Is he not doing well? You wouldn't say that. He's doing so well. So why are you taking him, him, him off? So I think he's doing so well. If, if, the, house, if the house has a problem, then he's not doing well. You say, oh, okay, I think we need to switch. But for, for as long as he's doing well, I don't think there's any reason for, to take him off. Well, it depends on mean, how you define, depends on how you define doing well. Because the last time Aima won the CAF Champions League, 2004, you know, and it hasn't happened since then. And you, you judge and, a club by virtue no, of how many trophies no, they win. And, and nobody, in Nigeria, no Nigerian team has done it. If you could not do it, no other person has done it. So if you're judging him, for not being able to bring the CAF Champions League. If he asks you which other Nigerian club has done it after I did it, nobody. Well, you can have a point there. <laughs> yes. You have a point there. You have a point there. All right, so um, as far as Nigerian football is concerned, you know, the argument also continues to rage on. Should the government have a role, you know, in funding football in the country, or should we hand it over to, to private individuals? Now, when you talk about private individuals, you mentioned the likes of FC Fan Yuba, which I think is ex extinct as, as of now. Um, there's MFM Football Club. Uh, there's Van Dreza. There's Remo Stars recently gained promotion to the NPFL. What I'm saying is there's a, not a lot of privately owned clubs in the NPFL. And the ones who run by government are supposedly not doing so well. So, you know, we're, we're kind of... We haven't reached some sort of consensus as to what is better or best for Nigerian football. Uh, honestly, if that, that too has also been bothering me for quite a long time now, if these clubs are being run by private sectors, honestly, I, I think it, it, it will be much better. But how many people want to invest in the Nigerian league? I wouldn't want to invest in something that, that is not productive. Invest in, in the professional, Nigerian professional football league that is not being televised. How do you market your product? So you invest in something you know is going to bring income to you. So this, I think most of these private investors just sit down and say, oh, I don't think this thing is profitable. So they, they don't want to delve into stuff like that that will take out money from them and not bring them back income. Because this, this, I, I think this is the way these millionaires think, or billionaires rather. So they, they want to invest in something they can see the income and see how the thing is progressive. So nobody wants to come and invest in something that will not yield income for them. So I think that is the reason why we don't have much of these um, investors because the, the, the league is not marketable. And, you know, government, government, Nigerian government will always be Nigerian government. 
Mm. Yeah. All right, Fun. Absolute delight talking to you. But before we let you go, um, you said you're 29, and you know that the average footballer's uh, lifespan usually is between 15 to 20 years on the pitch. Outside of football, what exactly is your plan for, for tomorrow? <laughs> big question, big question. Like we, 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 there's a slang we normally use with the footballers where we say life after football. Well, I think, um, honestly, I'm still, I'm still planning about that. But I know I'm still going to be in, in, in the football sector. I know for sure, but I don't know which sector I'm going to be. But I'm still going to be uh, in the football circles. Are you going to come home to coach in the NPFL? I, 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 I don't, like I said, the sector, I don't know if it's the sector is going to be coaching, if the sector is going to be uh, players management or something. I know it's going to be okay. in the football sector. And wherever the location doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. Thank you so much Fun for speaking to us and Charlie Leakes. And um, we'll continue to keep track of your, your career, your progress. And um, if anything breaks, you know, you, you make a promise that this will be the first place that the story will be told. Huh? Hey, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Definitely. All right. Do take care now. So that was Mfon Udo on another edition of Charlie Leaks. And our promise here on the show is to bring to you those who matter as far as sports is concerned. It doesn't have to be football. It could be any sport whatsoever. So please keep a date with us for our next edition right here on Charlie Leaks and find out who our next special guest will be.